Alright guys, this is Charlie Deer right here, and this is the ignition system for my garden tractor. I haven't updated it for a long time, because we're underneath this weird coronavirus stuff, so... <clears throat> right now I have the fuel disconnected to the fuel line. It turns out my fuel pump's leaking, I got a... I ordered a rebuild kit for it. <clears throat> so, I made this coil wire, I mounted the coil here onto the top of the motor, and to give it some more strength, I've actually put a huge thick washer underneath here. I had to grind it out uh, to help give some strength behind this because I was afraid that the sheet metal would flex and it might crack around there. I just basically drilled a hole and put a bolt right there. Ground the end of it off so I can turn the screw. Um, I think you can see it over there. Alright, so <clears throat> I'm not completely done with it. I just tested it out yesterday. But basically I took the old um, solid state ignition and I hacked the front of it off and as far as the way I modified it, I used the pre-existing holes and just drilled them out longer. So, for instance, I just uh, and I added a plate for the to mounting the uh, high energy ignition module from like a General Motors underneath the distributor. So, here's these go to the <coughs> these go to the distributor. <coughs> Boy, they're dead and congested allergies. So this is the um, the hot from the battery this goes I picked this up from the ignition coil this goes to the um, ground side of the ignition coil and as far as uh, the pickup coil you can't see it it's in there oh, I also forgot to tell you, I put a piece this is a piece of brake line to uh, to keep from uh, to keep that proper distance right there just cut a piece of brake line and put it in there um, I cut this as a piece of, a piece of aluminum I had laying around um, and I, I like I said, these these all these all these holes except for this one are pre-existing. And on the back side of this plate is where I put the condenser. The condenser on the General Motors, at least from what I could tell, ran from the hot side. Um, other modifications I did to this box is I did drill a hole right next to this little bracket here where the spark plug wire used to go. There's a hole there. That's where the pickup coil comes out. And I used to have it all zip tied together right there. And then there's another hole. This was already built in to the box. I cleaned it up a little bit so that grommet would fit there and this is just an extension cord I cut up um, and the extension cord comes down behind where the uh, the box is or whatever and the uh, the old solid state box and I had the drill to hold through here which I had to use like a little 90 degree drill thing I got from Harbor Freight drilled a hole there ran it through and that extension cord comes up and this is where I grab the I grab the hot from the coil, and this is the uh, the ground or uh, ground for that that extension cord comes out to right there. I tried to keep it as simple and as clean as I could, so after I put this cover on, you won't be able to see much except for the coil. Um, as far as other things go, originally this the, the everything went through the ignition switch. I ordered a Cole Hersey ignition switch, uh, and this has a separate ignition. And the reason why is uh, um, it will disconnect the uh, it will disconnect the um, voltage regulator directly from the from the battery, so it doesn't, it doesn't put a slow load on over a long, you know, over parking it for long periods of time. So there's a there's a coil. Or I'm sorry, not a coil. There's a starter solenoid down there. Then you have um, this is the start of the uh, ignition switch. Uh, Cole Hersey it's supposed to be waterproof. It's kind of nice. I did have to drill this out. I reused the original um, switch, and additionally, I added a. Uh, this is a, a genuine Harbor Freight ammeter, and you have to make sure you. If you do this, there's a aluminum underneath here that sticks down quite far, so you had to come up enough to clear that. So if you decide to do this build, that uh, you do it correctly. Um, when you turn the lights on, you do have a nice backlight, so it does work. It runs through the ammeter. Um, a newer battery. I need to fasten it down better right now. I just have it like that temporarily because if you don't, it'll come back and it'll hit that light for sure. So I had to. You know, this light and this battery's only got like about a, uh, I don't know, like probably like a quarter inch gap or less between it. So there's not much room in there. Um, so I put my ground over here to that bolt there. And, um, and the voltage regulator. I put like a $12 cheap one on there, it's universal, 
and it bolts back behind here. I did that like a long time ago. You can hardly even see it, but it's one of those uh, uh, Chinese ones. I don't even know if you can even see it. Yeah, I think you can kind of see it. But it's uh, I think it's rated for 20 amps. So, and um, I'm just hoping it's enough to keep up with it. I did buy some uh, connectors a long time ago, so we'll be able to connect this with a weatherproof connecting uh, connector, uh, Delphi. Or sorry, weather weather pack or whatever you want to call it. So I'll be able. To, this is the wire, the hot wire off there. There is a fuse hidden behind there. You can't hardly see it. Uh, it's hiding, I think, behind the steering column there. You had to pull it back. There. That runs between the hot off the solenoid to the hot on the uh, on the uh, ammeter. It's rated for 20 amps. I figured if it ever pulls 20 amps, there's something's definitely shorted. So. 20 amps is more than enough for anything, so...